All right, so here we are at the computer and I got the Lightburn software pulled up. So you're just gonna search for Lightburn. So this is a paid program that you gotta have, I guess, but they do give you a 30 day trial. So if we click here on download trial, we can see here it says 30 days. But if you're wondering how much it costs, if we click here on purchase, $99. So let's go ahead and download it. Or let's go ahead and save it. So it's going to download a DMG file. Then we're going to double click that. So on Mac, we just have to grab this and move it to the applications. And it's simple as that. We're installed. So let's go ahead and open it up. It's going to confirm. And so here it says that, you know, if you have a key, insert it, or you can start your trial. So if we click on this button, that's going to start our free trial. So it has been activated. Welcome to Lightburn. Okay. To agree to a few things here. And now we can connect to our device. All right, so here we are at the laser and I got my MacBook Pro here. So what we need to do is connect it with the two cables. And if you need the adapters, they're provided. So it'll be USB-C to USB-C. So the newer MacBooks, they have a bit more ports, which is nice. So one of them will go to the laser here at the front and the other one to the USB camera here on top. So we could go to find my laser and see if we can find it. But the right way to do is to import the file, which is on this thumb drive. There's a little micro SD card there and I do have another adapter here so we can read it. So if we click on import, then go to our little SD card and we can see these are all the folders that are inside of it. And if we click on software here on number five, then go to Lightburn, we can see the Falcon 2 Pro parameter file. So if we select that and open it, it's gonna load it here, it's the Falcon 2. And then we're gonna click okay and then here, in the laser devices area, we can select the correct port path. So I don't think these two are the correct ones. Let's see, maybe I need to restart the machine. So let's go ahead and click this emergency, turn it back on. So let's click this home and see if the laser reacts. Okay, so it doesn't. But for some reason, it's not reading it, which is kind of weird. Maybe we should try another dongle or maybe I should flip this around. I'll try to go with the other end. Maybe that'll do it. Probably just computer most likely what's going on here doesn't want to pick it up. Let's go ahead and try this other adapter I got. Maybe it's just an adapter issue. So yeah, I'm having a little bit of a trouble here connecting. All right, so that time I restarted it. It's not there, but you guys saw some popped up. And here we go. So finally we have the port connection, the USB. And there it goes, it's starting to work. So it's moving. So yeah, that was a little bit weird. And I am using my adapter here. I'm not sure if that helped or not, but in any case, it's probably the Mac OS just, you know, being extra cautious with the things it connects to. But in any case, we are connected now, so, and it did home. So we have the control to the laser now. So if we open, let's see, software tutorial, light burn. Okay, there's a file here that kind of explains how to get started and import it. We do need to edit something in the settings there, two millimeters a minute, so not the second, but the minute. And also we need to enable laser on when framing. So yeah, and then it kind of goes over how to use this thing. So there's definitely a learning curve to this, and we're not gonna go over everything, but we are gonna do here the important things, hopefully. And if we go back to light burn and click here on settings, so everything looks good here, I think. All right, here we go. So in the units and grids, we got millimeters a second and millimeters a minute. So you definitely want to be here. And then display, I think everything's good and everything here. And then we also have the camera settings here. So let's just okay that. So let's click this little tool here and make sure, okay, so our laser framing on is not switched on. So let's go ahead and switch that on. And this is gonna, you know, project a little beam. So it shows you exactly the borders of your project. It'd just be easier to see. And yeah, I guess everything else is fine. So to me, this is all very alienish because I'm not proficient in lasers at all. I do 3D printing here and there, but not lasering. So this is definitely a little bit overwhelming with the software, but just like anything else, after you tinker around with it, go through all the settings, you probably figure it out. Obviously watch some tutorials and read the manuals that are pretty helpful. So I think for the next part, probably the more important thing is we need to set up our camera. So let's see first if it is even connected. So on the console here, we're gonna click on camera control and we need to choose our camera here on top. So as we can see, for some reason, our camera is not pulling up. Again, connection issue, which is very interesting. Maybe we need to flip this around. The adapter maybe goes on this end. Okay, there we go. So it did pop up now. And there we have a preview. So once you connect your camera, you should be able to see the preview. 
we go back to our SD card, we can see here on number three, it says calibrate an online camera. There's a PDF. And here it explains how to do all this. So basically, it's like a calibration with this card that's included that you kind of have to move around from corner to corner. And after that, it looks like it's going to be also calibrating for the fish eye or something like that. So I guess we'll have to see what all this is about. Basically, the reason we're doing all this is because the camera is quite important for lining up exactly where you want to burn something. So if you want to burn something on something small, you can actually use your camera to align that. And we'll go through that here in a bit. So on the top here, we got laser tools and we got calibrate camera lens. And here we can see that we can see from the top down. So we need to move this actually to the back. All right, so it looks like I triggered something. So we're gonna choose standard lens and then click next. That noise you guys hear is just the pump running. So I'm gonna put this card on the inside and we'll see it here on the screen pop up. So what you want to do is you want to put it to the middle of your workload, whatever that is. It is a little offset on the camera itself, which I guess is fine. So let's click on capture now. So it's going to capture this image and basically that's our score, 0.08. It says great. Anything with 10 or less is acceptable, but you want to be within the 0.5 or less is ideal. I totally forgot they said to use this piece here for the calibration also. So let's go ahead and do that. So all we need to do is just recapture the image. So we'll click capture again. Okay, I think we're just a little bit lower maybe. Let's try. That should be good, I guess. So if the score is good, then you can click next. So now it shows us here that we need to move it down. So I'm not sure exactly how much they want us to move it. I'm just going to move it here a little bit. I don't think that we're supposed to be going off the scale too much, but to the bottom of the camera there. There we go. So let's click capture. 0.12. So still good. It's still within the range. All right. So next one's going to be that side over there. All right, let's capture that, 0.18. Now we're gonna go to the other side. We'll capture that, 0.17. Now we're gonna go to the back. So we can go pretty far, but I don't wanna go too far, so let's just stay here. Capture that, 0.15, that's great. Now we're gonna go to this corner, 0.19, still good. Now we're gonna go to the other corner. So this one's 0.2, went up a little bit, but not a big deal. Still in the range. Let's click next. So yeah, I guess now we're just doing the corners. All right. Looks good. And the last corner, also good. So it looks like that's it for the alignments as we're done. So here it recommends to do the alignment wizard next. So we can either click finish here or click on align camera. So let's go to the next step here. And the camera alignment popped up. So we got our camera selected. Here it's saying to make sure to clear the camera view. It's cleared and you can move it manual here with these. Well, let's just click this here. You guys can see it goes to that corner. So let's click on next. So here we have fit workspace or 100% scale. So it looks like it's going to engrave this into that board. And um, I think what we need to do is kind of center up this board. Move this because we don't need this anymore. So let's click on frame and we should be able to see where it's going to... All right, guys. So the reason for the clicking actually is this door is not closed. So you got to close it. There's some little red lights right here. Close it. They turn blue. Looks like we got it restarted for some reason, froze in that position. Okay, there we go, so it homed. Yeah, and also make sure your lasers, you know, the right distance between the board. But yeah, if we click on frame, we're gonna see where the workspace is. And I can see it's outside that board by a lot. So that's probably not acceptable. And that probably has to do with the fill workspace instead of 100% scale so we probably need to go here and that changes to 100 now let's frame it there we go that looks a lot more right you guys can't see anything but on the preview here on the video you can kind of see and actually that looks pretty good I didn't really look let me look again here all right so it's a little bit off needs to go this way just a bit so I think I messed it up again yep All right, let's frame it one more time here to make sure that it's pretty much center on that wood. Close enough. So now it's gonna burn some stuff into it. So we're gonna click on start here to run it. But here's what the power is, it's at 60%. Should be enough for this project. Let's click start. And there we go, so it's actually burning in the pattern. And if we look from the top here, it's kind of hard to see as it's all reflecty and very yellowy. But yeah, we can see there it's got the number four. 
on that corner and then number three on this other corner and also in the center we can see there's like a little round circle it's basically going to use these patterns here to align the camera so the scaling and the positioning is correct all right so now that that's done we can click on next on the computer so now it wants us to capture an image but we need to move so we're going to move the head out of the way click it to that corner there Maybe let's see, I'll open the door more so we can get a more even light in there. So I'm going to click on Capture Image. So it's saying make sure you can see all of the four corners clearly. I guess you can. Let's click on Next. So here we're going to actually mark one through four. And you can zoom in into the image by clicking Zoom In here and actually move it around. So we're going to get as close as we can so we can get very accurate. And so what we're doing is we're just matching the X which is this piece right here, right in the middle of that. So you can zoom in as close as you want. So we're just gonna click on the very middle of that X. Well, I guess I gotta double click here, I think. Let's see, there we go, yeah. So now we're gonna go find number two and do the same thing. I'm gonna double click it, pretty close. We've got number three, should be good. And then number four, and now we have a box. And if you mess up, you can undo the last thing you clicked on. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. So let's click on next and it says we're done here. And there you go. So we pretty much got the camera set up. All right. So let's import some kind of project as a little test. And I think the SD card should have something. All right. So here we have G code 22 Watts. Yeah. For some reason, Bamboo Labs taking over my icons, but they have some kind of Eagle here. Let's open it up and see what it is. Okay. There we go. So under the cuts and layers here, we can adjust the power here. I think we're going to need a lot more than 20%. I guess about 60% should be good. So we also have the speed. I guess 6,000 is okay. I'm not sure. So that's our console where the commands are. Then our camera here. So on the camera, what's unique is that if we click update overlay right here, it's going to actually bring our piece of wood here on the picture. And now we can line up this eagle anywhere we want. So if let's say you brought an object in here of any kind, you can actually line up your burn image on anything. So if it's something small, you can, you know, or words, you line it up to, let's say you want to engrave a name or something on a knife or a piece of tool or anything like that. You'll just, you know, line it up right here on the image. So let's see how accurate our calibration is. And we'll put that little circle right inside the eagle. And it looks like it should not be touching anything according to what I can see on this screen. And so if this little circle that stays right in here, then that would be perfect. If not, then we're going to probably have to set the offset. Let's go ahead and run this project. But before we do, let's click on home. Remember to close our lid as we can't do nothing unless this is closed and these lights turn blue. Click on frame to make sure that's where it's going to go. I guess that's correct. Not too sure. I'm about to find out. <laughs> so yeah, if you're ready to run it, we're just going to click the start here and it's going to run the project. And by the way, I never set the laser off. It's just, you know, like four or five. Actually, no, probably like six or seven millimeters off of the wood. Probably a little high, but it should be fine just for this. Well, let's go ahead and go with it. And there we go. So it started. And maybe you guys can see there. It's lasering away. It's a little hard to show you guys because everything is protected with this red and yellow windows so but yeah we can see the image there so yeah our eagle is coming along and it shouldn't take long it's actually almost done i think okay yeah it is done wow that was a lot quicker than i thought it would be and look at that guys just realized it might be too bright but yeah the circle is pretty much perfect where we put it according to our image there on the screen so yeah i think we got everything aligned nicely so now we can technically put any object inside line up what we want to burn and it should match up pretty much perfect